dinosaurs. The mere mention sends the mind racing. Crazy, massive creatures that roam the Earth and basically took crap from nobody. They are that sort of rogue element in the game. That whole idea of, you know, kind of surviving while you're being hunted. To fight dinosaurs viciously, intimately, hand to hand, hand to teeth, kill or be eaten. This is the foundation of Turok. It is a name that has become synonymous with dinosaurs, video games, and the first-person shooter. It is a saga that reaches back to a more primitive time. And although there are elements of familiarity in the tale, our story starts here, in Vancouver, British Columbia, at game development studio Propaganda Games, the birthplace of the new Turok. With the franchise off the radar for more than five years, Touchstone had some big expectations to fill if they hoped to recapture the golden age of Turok. By acquiring Propaganda Games, they felt up to the challenge. Not only would the talented team at Propaganda reimagine the story for today's audiences, they'd also work to build a game that stood out and competed in the overcrowded first-person shooter genre. We heard a rumor, you know, somewhere out there that, that they were in the works of uh, acquiring the, the Turok license for a new game. And that just sort of got us all thinking of all these cool ideas, things that we could do with, with Turok. Hey, who's the new guy? I like his hair. Hey, dude looks old to your name. Turok, right? I know all about you. Turok is very much a reimagining of the Turok franchise. When we looked at it and said, what does this franchise mean for next-gen gaming? To update it to the, what the first-person shooter player wants these days, but to still keep the heart and soul of what the franchise is intact. The cost of entry in that genre is huge. You know, it was something that, that we, we entered into with a bit of trepidation. We really looked at all of the shooters that were out there and, and uh, tried to take sort of best in breed um, as far as what the cost of entry stuff was and, and tried to sort of match ourselves against each of those and then bring things that were totally new to the genre. We did bring a lot of those third person moments into the game, which I think really sort of separates it from other shooters that are out there. Over the years, first person shooters have tried every conceivable adversarial gimmick, but in the end, it has always been simply player versus enemy. Turok, however, puts a unique twist on the genre by introducing a third, indifferent party into the fray. The most imposing of them all would have to be the T Rex. It's, it's the biggest, it's the baddest. It, you know, it's, it's probably the scariest dino in the game. And it's big, it's imposing, it's scary. Just about everybody's first reaction is kind of fun, and a lot of times people just turn in the game and run away. In order to take down these behemoths, gamers are going to need a vast arsenal of cutting edge weapons. But is that enough? The, the primal weapons in the game, the bow and the knife, are, are totally the best part. With the addition of an original soundscape, a cinematic musical score, and a first-rate cast of actors, the new Turok Let's go. is born. I guess we can skip the usual training BS. There was a lot of interest when we started pitching the story and, and, and sharing the script around. It's a pleasure to do things that are smart and well-written. Sort of takes your game up a couple of notches. From an initial pitch to Turok's concept art, to the game's programming, and then product testing, we'll investigate every aspect of development. Stay tuned for more of Awakening the Giants, the making of Turok. We got so excited by that, that idea that we just started pumping all these creative cycles into coming up with ideas and a concept. And eventually we just put a pitch together and, and went down and, and pitched the execs. It was actually shockingly like the final product. They loved what, what we proposed and, and they gave us the gigs. So. It's a huge opportunity for us as, as Turok fans. Vancouver-based Propaganda Games 
successfully convinced the executives at Touchstone that they were the right developer for the job. I mean, it started with very much looking at it almost as if it was a movie script at first and saying, here are the characters and here's what's important to them and here's what the motivation is and how are they going to develop as they confront these different issues. We've only got 30 minutes till we touch down, so I'm only going to say this once. Our target is Roland Kane, leader of the legendary Wolf Pack. We had uh, screenwriters from Hollywood come on board and help with treatments and do revisions. So it definitely was something that bubbled up from the inside, but that also was spread around. and got a lot of experience and a lot of talented people looking at it to, to look at the, the dialogue, to look at how the scenes came together. This near future reimagining of the franchise places the gamer in the role of Joseph Turok. As a black ops soldier, Turok has engaged in many covert operations, the last of which, along with his wolf pack compatriots, resulted in deaths that still haunt the beleaguered warrior. Now, as the most recent member of Whiskey Company, Turok's new mission is deeply personal. He and his squad look to apprehend Wolfpack's fallen leader. Hey, who's he? Palavina. Somebody get a bucket and mop. We got a new cleaner on board. This is an elite group that's fought together, and they don't need this outside presence coming in, so they don't even trust him at first. And when you're tossed out into a hostile environment that you're trying to survive, trust is really, really important. Turok's here to help us track Kane down. He's a former member of Wolfpack. Yeah, before he screwed him over. Play, can it? He can't be trusted. It's a really compelling kind of premise and something that we could then build the entire experience around, you know, building out other characters to really flesh out the storyline, building out weapons and creatures to really make it a compelling gameplay experience. This futuristic, action-packed scenario lent itself perfectly to the kind of game the team at Propaganda wanted to develop, immersing the gamer into another world where they lived and breathed the same air as their character was paramount. That was so important to us, that this be a story that you get to live, that is not just a bunch of isolated plot points and a bunch of combat in between. You know, these aren't just guys that are on a mission trying to achieve one thing. These are individuals that are reacting in different ways and sometimes being confronted by terrifying things that makes them lose their cool. Crap. A great story does not necessarily make for a great game, especially when it comes to an action title like Turok. The developer had to take into account the interactive elements that will keep players involved and on the edge of their seats. Just in general, gameplay has to be foremost in, in all your decision making and story basically takes its, its lead from gameplay and supports that. As a result, gameplay and story elements often needed to be modified in order to keep a balance between the story narrative and the interactive nature of gameplay. We've actually gotten together as a group and said we don't like this part of the game and design leads come down and say well, what can we do to make it better? A lot of times, yeah, they're totally open to, to feedback and to changing things. Once the team had settled on the design and gameplay elements in Turok, the concept artist stepped in and began to flesh out ideas. Our artists, are, they're amazing. They're off the hook and they created something which is incredibly beautiful and, and I really think that when the game comes out, people are going to say the same thing. You know, you're throwing ideas at the wall and seeing what sticks, so you get like the most amount of coverage. You get to do tons of different things all the time. Yeah, I would say offhand, I probably made around 300 to 350 paintings. The artists at Propaganda didn't work alone, however. Artists worked alongside designers or producers to better understand what elements the team needed. A producer will come up to you with a, with a brief, a creative brief for, you know, say a vehicle or a character or something like that. You would, you know, then concept out some ideas and then present it back to a group and sort of try and sell your ideas to that group. What ends up in the final product and what makes it so great is a collaboration between all of the people that are involved. Every conceivable detail began as a drawing of some sort. Whether it was a thumbnail sketch of a piece of equipment, a colorful painting of a landscape, or a detailed schematic of a weapon, fell on the shoulders of the guys in this room. It was here that the team honed the visual and atmospheric style of the game. So what we wanted to do was uh, take our jungles and make them scary. So we took a lot of inspiration from artists like Frank Frazetta, try and get that very swampy, misty, damp feel to the jungles, and try and make them very claustrophobic. We wanted to make sure that our environments really gave the AI a chance to shine. Like much of the development process, collaborative efforts figured prominently with the concept artists and their work. 
you know, say you concept a bunker or whatever, then they'll add their little touch and another person will add their little touch and eventually becomes like this great amalgamation of like all these creative minds come together. We take that story point and we talk with concept artists about what it is we're trying to look for with mood, working with like the artists. They'll paint like a really cool inspirational piece and then all of us levels on are like, yeah, I can totally see that, you know, and, and then we sort of meet and iterate again. We just sort of use that as a, a guideline. At Propaganda, we make a point of making sure that, you know, we work cross-discipline. So we have our sprint groups who are working together to get features in the game. So we'll have programmers, designers, you know, an artist and an animator all in the same group. Through it all, the team at Propaganda Games worked together on every aspect to ensure an end result that everyone was happy with and that everyone had a stake in. Stay tuned for more as we'll examine the lifeblood of the game, Turok's remarkable artificial intelligence, and meet the stars of the show, the dinosaurs. All this and more on the next installment of Awakening the Giants, The Making of Turok. Reimagining Turok as a new game for next generation audiences was a daunting task. Vancouver-based developer Propaganda Games had some serious work to do. I think dinos will always have this like really special place in everybody's imagination. When we first see dinosaurs in books and in museums and everything, it's just amazing to think that these creatures once walked the earth. They ruled the earth millions of years ago. Although Turok's mission is to stop and seize Kane, Whiskey Company has to contend with these monstrous predators as well. When we approached our dinosaurs, we were looking for ways to really make them stand out and be unique. And, and so we started off by doing research on dinos, but ultimately we started to infuse ideas from, you know, horror movies and that whole idea of this bloodthirsty creature that will not stop no matter what. Of course, no one truly knows what it would be like to go up against a dinosaur, so the team at Vancouver-based Propaganda Games were free to let their imaginations soar. You know, when you are wandering through an empty jungle and you think you're safe or you think you're okay, and all of a sudden, trees are breaking, the ground is shaking, your heartbeat gets going. You know what's coming. History's dinosaurs may have had tiny brains, but the creatures in Turok are powered by an extensive artificial intelligence system. You've got a sandbox AI system where you can put these actors together, whether they're human or whether they're a dinosaur, and they know what to do with each other. Usually what a dinosaur does to a human is eat them. Basically, the AI has to be self-directing, be able to react to any number of different situations. So what we have to do as engineers is provide tools to level designers to allow them to try to have that natural flow of a raptor comes around the corner, sees a guy, he might decide to go for the MG rather than the player, or he might decide to go for the player. It's different every time. What does a dinosaur do when he sees a target? He doesn't care if he's one of Kane's men or a member of Whiskey Company. He knows what to do. He's going to try and hunt that thing. As they were creating a first-person shooter, the propaganda team needed to separate themselves from the pack. And one of the ways they did just that is with their advanced human AI. I want a human enemy that's going to use the same uh, weapons that I do, the same tactics that I do. You look at human enemies in our game, and they will flank you. They'll call to each other, and if you're not careful, you know, they will come around from the side and take you out. They'll work in tandem in order to bring the player down. They have a setup in where they're coming from and, and how they're acting when, when you first see them, but once they're in the field, they sort of, you know, it's, it's a set and forget sort of thing. They need to, to go and figure out what they need to do to survive and kill whoever they need to. All of this stuff just comes back to the basics of we have two AI systems that know how to play with each other very, very well and can be up to the players to how to use that kind of thing. Our human AI, they use the same weapons that we do. They use the grenades, they crouch, they take cover. Um, they'll fall back if they feel that they're taking too much damage. And you take the dinosaurs and throw them into the mix. And you know that every time you play the game, you're gonna get a fully dynamic experience. All this results in a seamless, more lifelike experience but it also set up some unexpected surprises. Occasionally we have raptors fighting each other, which we, we didn't actually code in deliberately, but with the, the luring mechanism, with the flare, the shotgun flare, and also the way the designers set up certain situations, we found raptors attacking each other, and it, it looks really natural, it looks like it's part of a living environment. The team's labor of love, blood, sweat, and tears 
delivered on all accounts. Animation in this game is some of the best animation that you'll see in a product, period, hands down, across the board. Fascination with these animals could stem from our first experiences with fear. Turok explores this suspicion with exciting and terrifying results. In our next installment, we'll look at the unique world and characters that populate this innovative game. When Awakening the Giants, the making of Turok continues. The world itself is gorgeous. You have caves, you have beautiful jungles and waterfalls. It's packed with tons of detail. I mean, it has to be, right? It's a, it's a jungle with thousands of hiding places and, uh, for you and for your opponents to be in. The environments are key to any game, especially a first-person shooter. In each level, the player looks immediately for any geographic advantages and disadvantages as they plot their route through the campaign. Vancouver developer Propaganda Games' approach to building Turok's world was characteristically collaborative. First step in designing a level is like, you know, looking at where the story point is and trying to get an idea of the feeling of the mood. That bridge is the only way across the valley, and that means we have to go through that base. Keeping the levels and environments from becoming stale or too linear is also a worry for the designers. Try to make sure there's always some other different way, you know, whether it's an obvious path or maybe not as obvious path, you know, and sometimes it's a weapon strategy that just suddenly opens a virtual path. In a sense, the levels themselves are another character. Each has its own unique look and style with various elements that can either help or hinder the player. So the most obvious route will probably be the toughest. You know, you're just going to go in and pop in and create a stir, but if you really take the time to explore, you'll find little crevices and little nooks and areas to get up high and pop guys with a bow. Pretty badass. Complementing the living world of Turok are a cast of characters as rich and complicated as the jungle environments themselves. Turok's great because he doesn't really want to be a hero. You, step forward. You're a Native American, aren't you? You're a genius. His heritage is a part of his identity, but it isn't the sole thing that defines him. Ever used one of these? Once or twice. Players may be the ones manipulating their character. Where'd you go? I stopped to take a nap. Very funny. But it's a cast of Hollywood actors that are bringing these characters to life. When we were writing characters, we kind of had actors in mind. The, the character Slade is voiced by Ron Perlman. Now Slade is a guy that you're with through a lot of the game. I could have taken you out and no one would have known. They'd have chalked it up to friendly fire. Nah, scratch that. You're no friend. You're a goddamn traitor. If I was a traitor, you'd already be dead. If you're not a traitor, then why'd you abandon your unit in Colombia? Straight ahead kind of guy. And um, a man of action. That kind of sets the parameters for what I need to think about him and playing him. He's done a ton of work for, for games, so he's a total pro. You know, he comes in, he knows exactly what you want, what you need. Let's uh, keep this between you and I. In addition to Ron Perlman, Propaganda Games and Touchstone filled out their characters with many diverse talents, including actor Donnie Wahlberg in the role of Shepard. I guess it's just you and me. I'm playing a part in a film, basically, uh, that people get to participate in, and uh, it's pretty cool. One of the standouts in the cast is Powers Booth in the role of the evil leader of Wolfpack, Kane. The army sees you as a bunch of violent reprobates with no future. But I see men who, with the right guidance, could become the best fighting machines the military has ever produced. And that is exactly what I need for Wolfpack. He was the first guy that we were just like, hey, Powers Booth, is the top of our list. Veteran sci-fi actor Chris Judge stepped into the boots of Jericho. We fought off one of their patrols a few hours ago. They'll be back. What I bring to it is, is kind of a unique vocal quality to the um, wonderful um, artistic impression of him. Quit screwing around. It's time to go. In the title role of Turok, actor Gregory Norman Cruz You've been talking to the wrong people. made the character his own. His decision he stopped saying it wasn't my fault and I was just following orders. I think that's what makes him unique. Your beef should be with Kane. 
he's the reason your brother's dead. It's great looking graphics, well animated characters, and smart level designs that fill the screen and help to keep the gamer engaged and visually stimulated. But it's compelling music and authentic sound effects that really help bring the world of Turok to life. We'll explore these aspects of the game in the next installment of Awakening the Giants, The Making of Turok. It has been said that audio is 50% of the movie experience, and that holds true for video games as well. Producing the audio for games can be even more complicated and demanding, but just as rewarding. It sounds huge. The audio team has done such an amazing job of bringing the creatures to life. We come up with them in our heads, we say them with our mouth, we do all sorts of crazy things. The music has to chase that action. It's a soundtrack that mixes itself based on what the game player is actually doing. And then that would be manipulated into a whole different sequence. You know, huge dinosaurs, you've got humans with weapons, you've got ambience and different waterfalls and machinery. There's a whole bunch of stuff to work with. The audio is a critical component to the storytelling, to the feeling of being in these deep environments, and also for the heart and soul of the game, which is the combat. Whether it's designing the ambient sounds resonating throughout the environments, or creating the distinct vocalizations of the indigenous creatures, the right sound design is key to making the world believable, and Vancouver-based Propaganda Games was up to the task. We end up uh, sitting down with the concept artists, and we uh, start looking at sort of what the general plan is for the game in terms of its themes, and you know whether it's you know dark and gritty, or if it's going to be a little bit more light toned. And then we start kind of building up our palette of sounds. Steve had to really explore all kinds of creative means of generating sounds, you know, bringing stuff from dogs to lions to, you know, walruses to all kinds of crazy sounds that they're able to manipulate and layer to get the impact that they want. We kind of had our, our line of dinosaurs and we'd sit down and say, you know, you know, what's the scariest one? Which is the one that is just going to be the distant banter type stuff? <laughs> That, that's not exactly it, but you'll hear it in the game, I promise. If there's a hunting raptor out there, you're gonna hear him. If you're getting near a dinosaur's lair, you're gonna know if you listen carefully enough. Sound design helps to place and relate the physical aspects of the game, while the musical score helps to convey and evoke mood, the overall tone, and atmosphere. There is interactive components, but there's also linear content as well. So if you look at what's going to be happening during gameplay where we worked on an interactive music system which had its own set of challenges. There was also 35 minutes of cutscenes that would require traditional film scoring. The music also needs to reflect the characters, situations, and an overall theme that brings the game together in a manner that is both natural and cohesive. A lot of the times you are just queuing off concept art, maybe rough screenshots, animation cycles, uh, you know, stuff that's in development. And you kind of piece through all of this art production work and you get a general feeling of where the project is going. It's a fantastic score. It's, it feels raw, it feels powerful, uh, but it also feels mysterious at times and, and builds that tension for the player as he goes through. The unique oral experience of Turok helps to immerse the player in another world full of mystery, danger, and excitement. Whether it's a dinosaur making its way through a lush forest that is heard rather than seen, or a firefight between soldiers, the sound effects give the game a sense of familiarity and weight, while music, on the other hand, explores the emotions of the characters, evokes tense situations, and lends itself to the overall atmosphere of the adventure. Through it all, these two elements breathe life into a world rich with texture and visual splendor. Next, it's time to head deep into the action as we explore the multiplayer aspects of Turok in the next installment of Awakening the Giants, The Making of Turok.
Multiplayer gameplay is an integral aspect of any first-person shooter. The thing that really inspires me about the Turok multiplayer is that it takes place in the Turok world. It's not just a firefight in an environment that you might see in any other game. The game started out with a, a very strong multiplayer theme. In fact, it was dominated as a multiplayer game. By having the dinosaurs in the mix as this neutral AI who will go after you or after you know your buddy or your enemy, it doesn't matter who, it really adds that certain sense of chaos. Being in a multiplayer match where you are also in the jungle and the dinosaurs are there as well puts a, a spin on everything that you do there. They're also in the high risk, high reward areas of the map as well. Like in the center of the map, in the high traffic zones where you might be able to get a really good gun, there might be some dinosaur threats that you're gonna have to deal with. Even with the dinosaurs, the multiplayer campaign needs to be engaging for the player. Thus, the team at Vancouver-based Propaganda Games implemented a few favorite modes in multiplayer, plus some creative innovation of their own. Well, we knew that players loved, you know, the classics, the, the death match, the capture the flag, the team death match. What we wanted to do is introduce some more strategic gameplay into it. So we created a game called War Games. And so each map in our multiplayer game has different types of objectives, one being like bomb the target, another one be collect objectives and bring them back to your base and things like that. So we like to sequence the objectives, so you have to do objective A before objective B before objective C, and your team has to work together to be able to be successful. Those are the things that create those, those gaming moments that you talk about. And, oh yeah, you did this to me, and then the dinosaur jumped in. That's the kind of stuff where you're really getting a multiplayer experience that's going to live on. I really like our co-op mode as well. It's a lot of fun. The four players, it really helps because the dinosaurs are, that again, that rogue element, and it's great to have somebody watch your back when you're trying to achieve an objective. As important as the weapons are in multiplayer gaming, so too are the maps. Whether it's a round of capture the flag or a no-holds-barred deathmatch, each map needs to be able to support a variety of modes. Each of the head-to-head -head maps supports five different game modes. Team Deathmatch, Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, Soul Capture the Flag, and War Games. Multiplayer gaming has made its mark on the world, and Turok continues that experience with some old favorites and some unique new elements. With an unequaled commitment to production quality and a terrific balance between story and gameplay, Touchstone and Propaganda Games hope to win over fans with their unique take on Turok and his adventures. What you're going to get is you're going to get ferocious dinosaurs, you're going to get terrifying forests that you have to be in, you're going to get an arsenal of weaponry to use in your fight, you're going to get all-out combat, but you're also going to get stealth, and you're going to get shadows and darkness and trying to be quiet and trying to, to survive in that jungle and then move forward again. All of it in a way that we consider to be next-gen gameplay as well as graphics.